It's been a week now since the catio was built, and my husband decided to add some extra levels for our spoilt cats to walk on. We have learnt that cats like to either be up high or hidden down low. It's probably a security comfort for them. We figured it would also give them a bit more entertainment while they were in the catio. My husband created these extra levels by adding more brackets to the existing catio frame. These additions still kept in line with our original plan of not damaging our house. After the brackets, he added simple rectangular frames and stapled the MDF boards to them. He made three levels for the cats to walk on. In the middle level, he cut a hole so the cats could easily access the level below. He then sealed off all of the MDF boards by smothering them in PVA glue. This would help protect them from warping the next time it rained. The finishing touch was to add a tarp over the sleeping quarters of the catio. This would help with weatherproofing, but also add some insulation for warmth during the cooler months. Before these additions, the top half of the catio was a wasted space. But now, the extra levels let the cats use all parts of the catio from top to bottom, and they really enjoy it. It certainly maximises the space inside the catio. The catio is pretty much complete now. There is only one more thing that we really need to add to it, and that is some mosquito netting. We constantly leave the sliding door open so the cats can walk in and out of the catio as they please. But because of this, we suddenly had an influx of flies in the house. I really can't stand having flies in the house. So we'll be adding the mosquito netting to the chicken wire at another time. Has anyone guessed what we ended up naming both of the cats? Yes, that's right. We named the cat Tump and the kitten Sooty. How did you know that? Tump and Sooty, Sooty and Tump. The same as our channel name, which isn't really much of a secret, is it? But what do the names mean, and how did we come up with them? Okay, let's start with the cat Tump. As viewers of this channel, thanks for your support guys, it really does mean a lot. You're all aware that she is missing a foot. We still don't know what happened to her and how she lost it, but she does seem to get on quite well without it. From the very beginning, she managed to successfully look after herself and her kitten before we even noticed her. She is one tough mama cat, that's for sure, but she does have a sweet personality too. Early on, before we even caught Tum, we were trying to think of names for her while we were sitting at our dining table eating our dinner. What about Tabby? asked my daughter. Stump, said my husband, since she's missing a foot. Stabby, said my daughter, trying to join the names together. Um, no, Stabby doesn't really sound nice, I said. Tump, stated my husband. What about Tump? He asked. Yeah, Tump, I like it. It suits her. It's different and it sounds cute, I said. We all agreed on Tump and that was how quickly we named her. Cat, you will now be called Tump. The cat quickly learned that this was her name and she always came to me when I called her. So my husband named the cat Quite fitting really, since he was the one who originally noticed her and gave her food to earn her trust. He was also the one who had the strength to try and successfully trap her, despite knowing it could cause issues between them from doing so. Now how did we name the kitten? First off, he's a black cat. He has very dark fur with not even a hint of another colour. He does however have some black stripes, which obviously comes from the tabby part of Tump, but even they are very hard to see. Midnight Kitty. Ooh, misty twilight, said my eight-year-old. My daughter likes watching that My Little Pony cartoon, so all her ideas for names were very similar to the ponies names in the show. Uh, we really need shorter names for the cat so it's easy for us to remember, I said. Stormy, said my husband. Nah, I said. What things are black? I questioned, and then proceeded to name off all the black things I could think of. Oh, he's black as soot. What about sooty? I asked. The conversation kept going and we all couldn't agree on a name for the kitten that night, but I really did like the name Sooty, so I started calling him that whenever I saw him. It was only when my youngest daughter, who has trouble forming her words, clearly called out Sooty to him one day that confirmed it for us. Sooty was now his name. Kitten, you shall now be known as Sooty. After finalising both Tump and Sooty's names, my husband very proudly handmade aluminium tags to go on both of their collars. He cut these out from an old computer case we had lying around in our garage. I was quite happy to just buy something from the shop, but he really wanted to do something special for them both. And he did. We have some very stylish kitties now. I hope they both know how much they are loved. This concludes our live doco series. We have learnt a lot along the way. 
In short, it is possible to domesticate a stray cat and they can become much loved members of your family. You can save a life or two and you're not only benefiting their lives and the environment, but your life will be greatly enriched from doing so as well. Thank you to all of you who have watched our videos of Tump and Sooty. We hope you enjoyed the ride. All of your lovely comments have been wonderful to read. They kept us going when times got tough. It takes a bit of effort to make these videos. We have young kids and I work full time as well. Trust me, the state of the house has greatly suffered because of it. So we might take a little break for now, but we do plan on sharing more videos of the cat soon. So stay tuned. P.S. If there's a cat video you'd like to see us make, please do let us know in the comment field below. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching guys. See you soon.